So there's also, what, as I mentioned earlier, there's what we call remote repository. So when we talk about remote repository, we're looking at the remote location where the code base is hosted so that any team member can access that particular information. Now, your local copy is just a copy that you alone can see. So assuming I'm working on my laptop. So if I create a file or TXT, it's just on my computer and no one else can see it. But assuming I want someone else to see it within my team, then I leverage uh, the, pro the powers of um, some kind of remote repository. So like an external server or external storage area where the copy that I'm working on will be deposited. So which will be file or TXT and another team member who is also maybe somewhere in China or in, in the rest of the world would be able to also look at that copy and make a copy from that and work on that same file. So where you have the external source or that external um, server giving access to that information is where we refer to as the remote repository. It's just an external place where that information is stored. Now, the remote repository can be public, meaning that information that you store in online can be made public to everybody or can be made private so that only members within that particular project can see it. So it depends on how you want to go about it. But mostly, if you're working on an enterprise project or you're working on a project that is commercial, you wouldn't want the rest of the world to see. So you could keep that particular repository private, which even though it's on a remote server, there's only people who are within that particular team or project would be able to have access to it. So as we go along, we create our teams, you see, you'll be able to work on a repository a remote repository and they will only give access to team members.